This episode of Film Rides brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Ride, we've got more light stuffs and tripods. Welcome to Film Ride, the show that takes mystery out of the effects and techniques. Going to some of your favorite Hollywood films, I'm your host. Ryan Conley, and a few weeks ago we talked about this store-bought LED lighting, which I've been using a bit since then, but recently I saw someone doing something that gave me an idea. So we're going to be trying that out today. Plus, I've been getting a lot of questions about tripods lately, so we're going to be talking about my mid-priced to low-priced tripods, because we can. <laughs> I went back to Home Depot and got some extension strips for that LED kit that I bought and a can light. Then I lined the inside of that can light with as many of these strips as I could to get the most intensity possible. This is good because I'm utilizing the reflection inside the can to focus more light and I have a simple way to mount this wherever needed. I had a few comments before about buying those raw strips and those rolls and making it yourself and that's a great idea which is something we plan to try out soon and the reason we link to this video right here which shows you how to do that but the point behind this one is that it's plug and play. No need to build anything. So if you aren't good with DIY, this is perfect for you. Best part about this light is how you can switch colors as we were showing in that other episode, being able to jump through these different looks with the click of a button is super helpful when testing out ideas. But real quick, let's take a look at a few test shots we did with this guy. colors. I don't use them often since our projects don't usually lend themselves to that sort of style, but films like Drive, Only God Forgives, Blade Runner, and The Coming John Wick all use color in really interesting and less common ways. We're all very used to that real life aesthetic, which I also love, of course, but I also love extremes. Practicing with that, moving the light around, using different colors against different backgrounds with opposing colors to see what all of that does to give you different emotions. It's just one more thing to get you thinking differently about your work and filling up that filmmaker tool bag of ideas for you to pull from. Another thing that we found with this setup is that it's actually pretty good for faking cop lights. We just quickly jump between the blue and red colors to simulate that look. At a sound effect, boom, production value. Next up, tripods. <laughs> This right here has been my workhorse for the last five years or so. It's the Banfrotto 546B legs with a 504 HD fluid head. I got this as a package, which goes for about 750 bucks right now, but they are two separate pieces. The head, which is a half ball mount and the legs. It can take a good amount of weight and still after many years of abuse, gives me really nice smooth operation on the head. Of course, on the head, you have all the essentials, which is a must for any tripod. And that is the ball leveler, pan and tilt tension and pan and tilt lock. This is a two-stage system, which means I have two risers on here to get up around five feet, a little bit over, I think. It is pricey for low-budget filmmakers, but it is one that will last and will handle all sorts of setups. But if you wanted to save a little bit of money, I believe like 150 bucks, you could go for the newer Manfrotto 502 HD system. Doesn't hold as much weight, but it is still a really solid option. You could also go for the 502 AH head. This is a flat-based head, so you can easily mount this on sliders or the like. I did this for my Creative Live class when we were showing how to do a digital push-pull, which you can find that class right here. Perverted. Moving on, we have my Kessler tripod and head. This is my most expensive setup, running at around $1,000, but it is a monster of a system. This thing can hold just a ridiculous amount of weight. So whenever I need to get a heavy system on there, like a Cine slider and kitted out C500, like we did with the Adobe the Frog project, this is definitely my go-to roided out mammoth. It's also a must for me when using any kind of jib systems. My Manfrotto would just collapse under that sort of weight. I never use this as a standard head though. If I'm needing a tripod to pan, tilt smoothly to follow a shot, this is not it. For that, I'm using my Manfrotto. This guy is amazing for heavy lifting, but it is a very heavy system that doesn't have that finesse. So you wouldn't use it for those basic functions. But those are my more pricey systems. Now we take a quick break and look at a great low cost solution.
Brain.com is the place to go if you're trying to get yourself seen on the interwebs. If you want a business card o digital, you need a website. And to do that, you need a hosting plan. Domain.com has reliable and affordable hosting plans. They got a domain discovery service to help you pick the right name for you. It's not that bad, actually. As far as interruptions go, it's, it's not the worst one. And if you use the coupon code FilmRider to check out, <laughs> if you use the coupon code FilmRider to check out, you get 15% off your domain name and web hosting. When you think domain names, think. Logo. So we looked at my more high-priced tripods. Now let's take a look at this sexy fella. This is the three-pod video tripod. This one is the V3AH system, which is a two-stage system that can extend to about five feet and handle up to 14 pounds, which is really solid, especially when considering that this goes for $130 for the whole system. Not too bad at all. Now given the price tag, I'm kind of surprised at how solid this tripod is. It's light, but doesn't feel cheap, definitely feels solid, and unlike other systems at the same price range, I have no problem dropping my camera on and walking away. And when you slide your camera on, the plate has a locking mechanism on it, so it won't just slide off to its doom if you forgot to lock it down. Always nice to have. It packs up nice and small too, much easier to get around with than with my Manfrotto, which is where this guy comes into play. So when I'm traveling with gear, it's usually this that I'm gonna be taking instead of the Manfrotto. Just pop the head off of it it all becomes very small and portable and i can usually shove it right in my suitcase my only issue with it is that it lacks pan and tilt tension control so the resistance that you get is all that you're getting no more no less but again for the price this is a small complaint but a definite issue for me all in all though for the price and the quality that you're getting i think this is a great tripod probably the best super low price tripod i've used yet and just for some icing on the cake this is my monopod i love this thing the one-legged tripod of goodness this is the ultimate portable system though not a tripod of course since you're not getting a fully static shot but if you are using is and you add warp stabilizer in the end you can actually end up with something that looks like a lockdown shot. So it isn't a lockdown look that you're getting in camera. It's somewhere between a tripod and a shoulder mount, really, and I love it. It's a great way to operate run and gun, very light gear, and I will often collapse the leg a bit and use it as sort of a ghetto glide cam. It obviously won't be incredibly smooth, but it's better than just holding it in your hands. This one is also from Manfrotto, which you can grab for about 70 bucks, so it's a great low-cost piece of gear that's very, very versatile. Logo. And that's it for today. Some lights, some tripods, good times, had by all. Of course, you can follow me on the Twitters right here, and I'll see you guys next time when the alien blood that's built on me changes everything.